Hey, it's Tony from Adafruit. And in this video, we're gonna look at the PCA9685 PWM and servo driver with MicroPython. So it's a lot of things to say, uh, but basically it's a little board that makes working with servos and generating PWM or pulse width modulation signals much easier. So you can like dim LEDs, for example, uh, really nice little board, makes it simple, uh, and it's a very simple little MicroPython module that you can use so that you can be up and running really quickly and doing things like moving servos and lighting up LEDs. And I just realized I forgot to turn the lights on, so let's uh, let's do that. Hey, there we go. Uh, a little bit better view of the face. That might make things a little bit nicer. Uh, so anyways, that's what we're going to look at in this video. Uh, we'll just go through uh, a guide. Surprise, surprise, I've got a little guide that uh, just got published on the Learning System that shows how to use a nice little MicroPython module to control this board. So let's just kind of dive in and get started. And hopefully the audio is fixed in this stream. Uh, last stream, I had just one channel. I think I sorted out the issues with uh, the microphone. So uh, let me know in the chat if uh, the audio sounds good now. Anyways, so, though, we'll go to the main view here. So I'll turn on everything else. And uh, there we go. Okay, so in the upper right, I've got a bunch of parts, and we'll kind of come back to what's going on with uh, all the parts here. But on the webpage here, this is a link to the guide that I mentioned. So this is the MicroPython hardware PCA9685 PWM and servo driver guide. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about you know exactly what this thing is. But I'll put a link in the description when this goes up on YouTube so you can go to this guide, and it'll just walk you through kind of step by step uh, and see uh, how to use this uh, hardware with MicroPython. So we'll just kind of dive in and start uh, going through the guide here. So for the hardware to use this, obviously you'll need some kind of MicroPython board um, and the board needs to have I squared C support. So pretty much every MicroPython board, as far as I know, has I squared C support. Uh, so this guide, I mentioned the ESP266 and the Feather M0, but really any board should work. So things like, you know, the Pi board, the YPi, uh, as long as it can do I squared C, then it should work with this uh, module and this library. Uh, and then for the feather board specifically, there's a handy little feather wing. So this guy right here, a uh, nice little thing that just snaps right onto the feathers and makes it really easy to use this. But there is also an explicit breakout board. So I mentioned, obviously you'll need a PCA9685 board. And so like I said, there are a couple versions. There's an eight channel version that's uh, in the feather form factor. So this small one, and you know, you can really only fit those eight channels on here because you need to plug in your servos there. So you can't go much higher, but if you need more than eight channels, uh, there's a 16 channel breakout board that looks like this thing here. So a little bit larger, but it's uh, it hooks up just through the I squared C connections. This is good if you're using a different MicroPython board, like the Pi board, for example, you can hook up the I squared C connections here, and then you've got 16 channels of PWM output uh, that you can go crazy with and control a bunch of servos. This is the feather wing board. So it's uh, you know nice and small and snaps right onto feathers. And you can use, uh, also there's an Arduino shield version of this. So I didn't show this, but if you're using like the Arduino Zero, then you can use the shield and snap this on. And it looks like this should work because it just uses the I squared C pins that we support with our Arduino Zero, the SAMD21 MicroPython firmware. Okay, so you need obviously the board and the driver board. Uh, you'll also need some kind of five volt power supply. So with these PCA9685 boards, they actually have a little terminal block here that you can plug in some power to. And that's so that when you're powering servos, you're not trying to use the five volt power from your board because some boards like these feathers, uh, they don't actually run on five volts. So you might be able to get five volts from your USB connection, but if you're running off batteries, you're not gonna have that, uh, for example. And in general, when you're powering servos, you know, even tiny little servos, if they get stuck, they have DC motors and those can pull a decent amount of current. And so you might damage your board. So in a lot of cases, you really do wanna use an external power supply. I mentioned a bunch of options. I like to use something like this. This is just a four AA battery pack. So you actually get more like, I don't know, five and a half volts or so out of this, but that's fine for powering servos. This is real simple and easy to use. Uh, you can also use like a barrel jack adapter and plug in a five volt power supply, like a little two amp supply, something like that. Uh, but you do wanna use that, use an external power supply. Uh, and then obviously you'll need some servos or some LEDs uh, to do PWM kind of dimming of them. So this is a little micro servo that I'll demo with, but you can use lots of different servos. So there are big servos, small servos, high torque servos, metal gear servos, a metal gear servo. That would be a fun game. I think uh, Hideo Kojima, he must be working on that next. Oh no, he actually is not. He's not with uh, Konami anymore. So, uh, but maybe one day we'll get that game. Uh, so yeah, you can get those versions. There's also continuous rotation servos. Those things are cool. So that's a servo. So most servos, they have this thing on the top here. This is kind of called the, the horn. 
and this is what moves around and so you can connect things to this like if you wanted to sweep something like a dial or a gauge around but you usually have a limited range of motion so you can move like in 180 degrees or so back and forth but a continuous uh, range servo basically can spin around and you can control the speed of how fast it spins and that's really useful if you're building a robot so you can use like two continuous rotation servos for the uh, wheels that move it around and depending on how you change the speeds of those you can control if it turns or if it moves real common thing that you see with robots and so that could be a cool project in the future I, i'm not going to do it in this video but a, a micropython robot would be a lot of fun to build uh so you know keep your eyes peeled i'm sure we'll, we'll do some stuff like that in the future uh then you might need a breadboard and jumper wires if you're using like the breakout board version of the pca9685 soldering tools obviously you'll have to solder some headers onto here uh it's a pretty easy thing to do though so check out like the soldering guide if you're new to it uh you know don't be scared it's it's pretty simple and straightforward or go to a makerspace if you've never soldered before someone there would be uh, happy to show you how to solder i'm sure okay so once you get all the parts it's pretty easy to put this together um you know if you're using the breakout i show how to wire it up but really you just need to connect your i squared c connections so your sda your data line and your scl your clock line uh, and then power and ground and so you want to power so there are two power connections on the breakout there's a vcc power and a v plus power and you actually want to connect to the vcc power because this is what powers the chip on the board uh, and the V plus is actually another way to send in this external five volt power. So, you know, you don't necessarily need to connect to this and you don't want to connect this to your development board. Cause like I said, you don't want to power this from your development board, uh, but you do want to have some external power supply here for the feather wing version. I'm just going to snap this thing in. It's that easy. So it's, you know, just plug it in and you're just about good to go with this. And with all the feathers, it's going to automatically be connected to your I squared C connections. So you don't need to like change anything or mess around. Uh, but they're on the back, I believe, you can actually change the I squared C address of this so that you can actually stack multiple of these drivers uh, together, although it's going to be hard to stack them because the connections are on the top here. So you might need to think of some interesting way to uh, connect your servos if you have multiples of these boards. But because you can have lots of different I squared C devices, as long as they have a different address, then you should be able to use multiples of these boards. And there are little uh, headers, or not not headers, but uh, little uh, connections you can bridge with solder on at least the breakout, and I'm pretty sure the feather, I, I won't pull it off and check, but look on the, the product page to see where you can change the address and have a bunch of these boards together. So I think the product page said with the 16 channel one, uh, you can drive like up to 96 or so of these uh, servos, I wanna say, uh, okay. Oh, oh, so up to 992 servo outputs. So uh, that, that should do you just fine with uh, as many servos as you need. Uh, if, if you have more than 992 servos, please show us your project on the show and tell because I want to see what you're doing with that. That would be amazing. Uh, okay, so that's all I need to do with the hardware. I do, well, actually, one more thing I want to do. So let me plug in my power supply to this little terminal block here. And let me make sure I get the ground on the right side and the uh, power on the correct side. So I'll just screw this in right here. So that's connected. And then that's almost connected. There we go. And I'll screw that in. There we go. All right, so that's in. Oh, I pulled out the driver bit. There we go. Okay, so the power supply is connected and I'll turn it on. And you see a little light should come on just telling you that it's got five volts power. Okay, so that's all good. Um, now let's turn to the software side of this. So let's check this out. And just like the last guide that I did on um, using the OLED display. So in general, uh, using modules with MicroPython, at least the way that we're going to do it with Adafruit so far, uh, is really just a matter of copying over these .mpy files. So you want to basically grab these files from the GitHub repository release and then copy them onto your board using, if your board has like a USB mass storage mode, you can use that. If it doesn't, then you could use a tool like Ampy to put files onto the board. And in the guide, I, I link to other guides that explain like how to use Ampy and some of these tools. So check that out. Now for this library, uh, it's up on GitHub. And again, links will be in the description below. And in the guide, it links to this page too. But this is the library that was created, a real nice little MicroPython module that you can use. And if you go to the releases tab, I put an initial release here where I generated these .mpy files. Now for this library, there are actually three files that you want to grab. There's a motor.mpy, pca9685, and servo.mpy. So let me just copy the links to these 
And I'm gonna go ahead and download these files. So yeah, we'll go to this directory. So I'll just grab the uh, motor.mpy file, and then let's grab the PCA9685 file. So I'll download that file, and then the servo.mpy file, and I'll grab that one. And you don't technically need all of these files. Like if you're only controlling LEDs and just dimming them the brightness, you really just need the PCA9685.mpy. If you're if you're controlling servos, you need both the PCA9685.mpy and the servo.mpy. And then there's also a motor.mpy. I don't go into this in the guide, but it does look like there is a way that you can control DC motors using this driver board. Um, I haven't done it, so I didn't want to do it in this guide yet, uh, just because I want to make sure that I understand kind of how it works and how to hook things up. Uh, but if you're curious, check out the source code. Uh, it could be kind of an interesting thing to play with later for this. Uh, but there is also a future guide I'm going to do. There's a separate feather wing that we have that's a DC motor driver board. It uses some H bridges, which are uh, nice little ways to power motors. Gives you kind of forward and reverse and speed control and things for that uh, like that. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll check that out in a future video. Okay, so I downloaded those files. Now the next thing is I need to get these onto my board. Uh, the board that I'm using in this video is the SAMD21 Basic Proto. And this board is running the latest version of our 1.8.5 MicroPython firmware. So I mentioned in the software page, uh, for the ESP8266 at least, make sure you're using version 1.8.5 or higher uh, because that's the version that supports these .mpy files. Uh, for the SAMD21 firmware, make sure you've got the latest version also uh, because you just want to stay up to date. There's always bug fixes and things coming in uh, for that one. And also just a quick little note too, um, we're, we're trying out some new fun stuff with the SAMD21 firmware. So you might notice uh, there's a new feature that'll be checked in and it's not in the current release, but probably in the next release uh, it'll be there where if you edit a file through the USB mass storage mode, the board will actually automatically reset and run your main.py again. So we're trying to think of some cool ways to do real fast kind of iterative, uh, iterative file-based workflows where you modify a file. And if you think of things like if you've ever done Flask web development, you know, the debug server will automatically reload after you save a file. So we'll try it. We'll see how this works with hardware and, and try and do kind of a similar thing. This could be kind of cool. But just an FYI, if you play with that and you notice like, hey, your board resets after you save a file, it's by design. Don't open a bug on it. Uh, we're just gonna, we're trying it out and seeing how it works. Uh, and it could be a cool way in the future to uh, do some development here. So anyways, uh, I've got these on MPY files. Now, since I'm using the SAMD21 board, uh, it acts as a USB mass storage device. So I'm just gonna go and copy these files from where I downloaded them, uh, which I'm trying to remember. Okay, there we are. So here are my files right here that I downloaded. So I'll copy those. And then here's my MicroPython board, and I'm gonna paste them in here. Uh, and then just to make sure the files copy, I'm gonna eject the drive. So that just closed it. And then I'm gonna press reset on the board uh, just to reset it, uh, there's a little bug right now where sometimes the file caches, uh, the files are cached and don't update. Uh, so for now, reset your board after you copy files over. Uh, okay, so at this point, now I should be able to connect to the serial REPL uh, of my board. So this is the USB modem, uh, I believe. Oh wait, sorry, dev tty dot USB modem 11.5200 baud. And okay, so I've got my MicroPython REPL. And so let's go through and let's start playing with some of the usage. So the very first thing you need to do, you need to initialize I squared C, and this differs between uh, each board in small ways. Uh, so for I squared C with the SAMD21 firmware, you know we identify pins based on a string. So you uh, specify your clock pin and your data pin like this. For the ESP8266, the pins are identified by numbers, and for other boards like the Pi board uses strings. So uh, you know I link to the I squared C guide. Check this out. This kind of explains for most of the boards how you can initialize I squared C. Uh, but once you've initialized I squared C, then all of the code is the same between each of the boards. So, you know, this is just a general pattern you'll probably see with most MicroPython stuff in the future uh, because each board can be a little bit different in how it works. So, uh, you know, most of your initialization might change between boards, but then hopefully things like using libraries and using modules will all be the same code uh, like that. It's, it's getting better. It used to be, you know, a little more scattered and I think things are getting, are improving. Uh, okay, so let's do this. We, we will uh, import the machine module and then I'll create an I squared C bus interface. So machine dot I squared C and I give it the clock line. That's the SCL pin and then the data line uh, machine dot pin SDA. And then for the SAMD21 firmware, I, I'm going to manually call the init. You can use the context manager. I mentioned in the guide, there's some fancy ways to do this initialization if you're writing a script. In your REPL, it's probably easy uh, enough to just call this init function yourself. 
So, okay, so I do that. And then the next thing, uh, so there are two things I show in the guide. I, I show you how to dim an LED using the PWM or pulse width modulation control of this board, because basically you have eight channels of pulse width modulation that you can play with here. And so, you know, your feather board itself or your development board usually has some pulse width modulation outputs that it can uh, control. You know, you're gonna have to look at your board because it differs by uh, each board. So you, you can use those to dim LEDs. Uh, but you know, the nice thing of using a dedicated board like this is that it's got its own external power supply. Uh, you know, it can control, at least with the Feather, eight channels, with the Breakout, 16 channels, and then you can add multiple boards, so you can add even more outputs. Uh, and the cool thing is like, you get a really nice stable PWM output. You know, it's not generating this in software. Uh, which, you know, some things like, you know, on the ESP8266, it's got a whole little real-time operating system that's running that, you know, might be interrupting your PWM signal. So you might not be getting the exact signal that you expect. So if you really do need a good stable signal, looking at an external board like this is a good option, especially when you're using servos, because if you don't have a nice stable signal going to a servo, it can move around and it can jitter. That's why if you've ever tried to use a servo with the Raspberry Pi, uh, most of the servo libraries don't use uh, any kind of hardware level, you know, generation of that signal. So, you know, you're just relying on the Linux kernel having enough free cycles to generate that signal quickly enough. And you might notice you go run some program and then suddenly your servos start going crazy. Uh, so that's the one big advantage to using a little board like this is you get real stable signal generation. Um, okay, so let's do this. Let's connect this up just to dim an LED. And so I show how to connect an LED to this. Uh, basically, I just need to connect to one of the channels, the ground and the PWM output, because each of these channels, there's a PWM output. That's the output that, like, it's a high-speed signal that turns on and off uh, really quickly. There's a <clears throat> dedicated 5-volt power, which is basically just power coming from your external power supply, and then there's a ground connection. And so the nice thing is this is actually exactly how servos are wired, so you can just plug a servo connector right into there. Uh, but for an LED, I just want to connect to the ground and to the uh, PWM output. So for one of these channels, let me check which channel I'm going to use. Let's use channel four. I'll connect to the ground and then the power. So we'll just connect this. And this is just a wire uh, that has, you know, just female connectors on here. Now, the nice thing is with um, RPCA9685 breakouts, there are resistors in series with the PWM outputs, which limit the current. So you can actually just connect a, an LED directly to the PWM output. You don't have to add a resistor in series there. Uh, so it just protects the output. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I have an LED here, and basically the longer leg, I wanna connect to the PWM output. That's the red wire uh, that I connected here. So I'm gonna slide that in. And then the shorter leg, I wanna connect to ground. So I'm gonna slide that in right here like that okay cool so my led is connected and let me move this up so you can see that so okay so there's led uh and let's start controlling it so i show you how to uh use one of the classes in the, this library so there's the pca 9685 module that you need to import first and so let's do that we say import pca 9685 and that works if that fails Go back and double check that you copied the files onto the board, those .mpy files, because uh, it's importing that .mpy file right now, and so we're gonna use the code inside of there. Uh, okay, so the next thing is we create an instance of the PCA9685 class, and we need to give it that I squared C uh, bus instance that we created before. So we'll do that. We'll make this PCA object, and we'll call, uh, we use the PCA9685 module, and then inside there is the PCA9685 class, uh, so we create an instance of that and we pass in the I squared C interface and okay, that's easy and simple. And if you're curious, there's actually documentation on this uh, library. So I link to it from uh, the guide here, but there's a real nice little read the doc site. And hopefully going forward, we'll get this for all of our modules and things. Most of them are already there, uh, but this this will be kind of handy. You know, it's it's a little basic right now, but it's got at least, you know, the interfaces. So you can see here's the class and it's pretty simple and straightforward. There's a frequency function. So this sets the frequency or how fast this PWM signal turns on and off. There's a PWM function, which lets you kind of explicitly set when the signal is on and when the signal is off. Or there's a duty cycle function where this is a little more useful uh, because this lets you say like what percent of the time you want the signal on versus off. And when you're using PWM with an LED, your duty cycle is basically the brightness of the LED. Like the longer it's turned on, the brighter your LED will look to your eye. Uh, now, before we start doing stuff with the duty cycle, first we need to set the frequency. So this is how often the signal turns on and off. And I'm just gonna set it to 60 Hertz. So that's 60 times a second. 
And basically, you just want to set the frequency to something that's faster than your eye can detect. So, you know, 60 hertz is fine, like 120, you know, anything more than probably 30 hertz is going to be plenty fast. Uh, but experiment, try, you know, see what happens if you set it down to like 5 hertz or 1 hertz or something, you know, what, what happens with that? It, it could be kind of interesting to see. Um, okay, so I set the frequency, and one thing to know is the frequency is set for all of the channels on this board. So you can't say, for this output, I want a frequency of 120 hertz, and for this one, I want 60 hertz. Uh, everything has the same frequency, but you can control duty cycle per channel uh, on this board. Now, I connected to channel 4 right here, so there's, there are numbers on each of these uh, little outputs, so make sure that you get the right uh, output. And then to uh, control this, there's just this duty function that you need to call, and so it takes two parameters. So the first parameter is the channel. In my case, it's channel four that I have. And then the next value is a 12-bit value, which is a value from zero to 4,095. And that just means wh what percent of time that signal is on versus off. So if, if I set a value 4095, that means the signal will be turned on 100% of the time, which means the LED should turn on full brightness. So let's try it, we'll do that. And hey, check that out. You know, the LED, it, it's bright. Like that turned on and that looks nice and bright to me. That looks like the way an LED should look. Uh, but you can also change, you know, to smaller values. So let's set this to a value like 1000 uh, instead of 4095. Now you can see it just got dimmer. So it's, you know, much less bright in this case. And it's actually kind of interesting. You might see in the video, it's kind of flickering or pulsing a little bit. And that's because my camera is capturing at, I think, 30 hertz. I think, and this stream is uh, is going out at 30 hertz or so, and this LED is updating at 60 hertz, and so you can see this aliasing where like sometimes, you know, uh, my, my camera is kind of picking up that moment in time where the LED is maybe like momentarily turned off for this PWM signal. So let's actually try, if I set the frequency to, you know, maybe 200 times a second or Let's set it like some like uh, I don't know a prime number. Uh, I don't trying. I don't know what a good prime number is. Maybe two thirty three is maybe a prime number. You know, I want something that's not a uh, an even uh, divisor. You know, that, that doesn't divide into thirty in some way. But let's just set this. And so okay, this looks a little better. So it doesn't look like it's pulsing as much uh, when I had it at sixty. So let's go, let's go back. I'm just kind of curious to, to play with this. Let's set this back to uh, sixty hertz. Actually, let's set it to fifteen hertz and see what happens in this case. Yeah, check that out. So that's kind of cool. Like, so when I look at this LED, I can actually see it with my eye slightly flickering, but on the camera, you can see this thing is flickering a lot. So, you know, that's Nyquest's, uh, the Nyquest limit basically, where, you know, this thing is not updating as fast as my camera is capturing it. So we're, we're seeing kind of that signal. So fun stuff you can do with signals, uh, just playing with the frequencies there and, and viewing things with the camera. All right, so we'll go back to a higher frequency. But anyway, so the duty cycle, you know, it's really just as easy as you, you pick your channel, channel four. Uh, I can set other channels, like let's say channel zero, let's set a duty cycle like a thousand on that. I don't have anything hooked up to channel zero right there. So, you know, that's fine. But uh, again, we can go back to channel four and set this to zero and that's gonna turn off the LED. So, you know, that's 0% duty cycle. And then, you know, let's go back, let's go to like 2000. So, you know, uh, a reasonable brightness there. Um, oh, interesting, that didn't turn on anything there. Let's try that again. Huh, that's that's interesting. I'm not sure why that, uh, why that didn't work, but uh, hey, if it doesn't work, try it again. Uh, so that's the basics there of how to dim an LED. So real simple, just connect LEDs. And this is cool, this, this would be good, like if you had like a, a little project where you wanted to make LEDs glow. And so I show in the guide, I won't type it in, but you know, you can just ramp up and down the duty cycle in a loop like this, put a little delay in there, and you'll have a nice glowing effect. Um, John Park just had a cool project where he had some uh, beakers filled with quinine and like tonic water. And when you put UV LEDs, they glow and it looks like, you know, these mad scientist lab. And so he had some, you know, a bunch of LEDs lighting these things up. And I forget exactly how he was driving it, uh, but you could use a board like this to do this kind of PWM control uh, and it'd be perfect for that. And your code would be really simple. You know, you're just changing the duty cycle and you could use like random functions or, or go crazy with it. Um, okay, so now let's have some fun. Let's connect a servo and start playing with that. So I will connect a servo to one of the channels on this board. So let's see. And make sure to connect the servo the correct way. So on this servo, there's a brown wire, that's the ground. There's a red wire in the middle, that's your five volt power. And then there's a yellow wire, that's your PWM signal. So make sure to connect that correctly on the uh, the channel headers here. So I'm gonna connect to channel seven, which is this one here. 
and the PWM signal is at the top of the board. So I just connected that. You might have just seen the servo just moved a little bit, which is usually normal. You hook them up and they might, might get a little bit of uh, movement there. Um, okay, so let's start controlling this servo. So first I'm going to, um, I'm going to reset my MicroPython board just because I want to reset the PCA board um, and you know get everything back into a good state. So I'm going to close it out and I'm just going to press the reset button on here. So, okay, so that reset my MicroPython board. And then let's uh, initialize that I squared C instance again. So we'll say machine.i2c, machine.pin SCL, and machine.pin SDA. And then uh, now instead of importing the PCA9685 class, because that's really the low level class that controls the hardware directly. Uh, the cool thing is there's a higher level class in here, the servo class that makes it a little bit easier to use servos. So you don't have to manually set that duty cycle. You can actually uh, control the position of the servo in a more natural way uh, using something that the, the pulse width that the servos kind of use to determine their position. So to use this, we want to import the servo module. So I'll do that. And this actually imports that PCA9685 internally. It just adds some extra functions that simplify the interface to the servo. So a real nice, simple thing. And then I need to create an instance of the servos class. And this takes an instance of the I squared C class, you know, just like you saw before with the PCA968. So we'll say servos equals servo.servos. And I give it an instance of that I squared C class. And oh, uh, I squared C bus error. I believe that's because I I initialized, uh, oh no, this is because I didn't call init, so I missed a step uh, with our SAMD21 firmware. Remember, I have to initialize I squared C. This is good to show. If you get this bus error on the SAMD21 firmware, make sure you initialize I squared C. Uh, now let's try that again. Hey, there we go. So now we're working uh, with this. And it's interesting, uh, by default, it sets the frequency to 60 hertz. And so you see my uh, LED is now back to 60 hertz and kind of doing that little flashing. Um, now the servo class, it tries to make kind of a best guess at how to configure your servo because the signal that it generates to control your servo, and I link to some good things in the guide. Uh, you know, there are a couple little tutorials we have on how servos work. So be sure to check these out because this is showing like a servo, the way you control it is you have to send this PWM signal with a very specific pulse length. And so depending on the amount of time that this pulse is turned on versus off, that controls the position of the servo. So when the uh, servo is at like a 1.5 millisecond or microsecond pulse width, then that's gonna be the center position, like right here in the center. And if it's a one microsecond pulse width, then it's like the far left position. And if it's a two microsecond pulse width, it's the far right position. So between one and two microseconds is the pulse width, and then the servo just moves in between those positions there. Uh, so, you know, it's good to just kind of have a basic understanding of servos before you dig into this too much. But your servos might be different. Uh, some servos might, you know, have a wider range of pulse widths that they accept. You know, hopefully there's a data sheet for your servo you might be able to see that might tell you what pulse widths to use. But I mentioned in the guide, um, you know, check the servo class documentation. You can adjust all of those things. So in the initializer for the servos class, you can pass in the minimum pulse length in, in uh, microseconds uh, and then the maximum pulse length in microseconds. Uh, even the, the degrees of rotation that your servo goes through. So this is kind of handy stuff. You, usually you want to stick with the defaults though. So, you know, try the defaults, but if you know you need to change them, then you can adjust them this way. Uh, okay, so I've got my server class, and then there are a few ways to set the position. So I can just call, there's a position function. Uh, I'm gonna sneeze here in a second, so uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm getting over a cold, so uh, oh, maybe the sneeze was just went away. Uh, okay, so there's a position function, and in the documentation, you can pass in lots of different things to this. You can pass in a degrees or radians value, which says, hey, I want to move the servo to you know, degree zero or degree 180. Now, this is based on the degrees that the servo is told when it's initialized. Uh, so this is basically, you know, by default, it's going to assume that your servo moves in a 180 degree arc of rotation. Not all servos move in that amount of uh, rotation. You know, some of them move at like 120 degrees. Some of them are continuous rotation that just move every, you know, can just will keep going forever and you control their speed. Uh, so you might need to adjust this value. But I like to use, you can actually just pass in the microsecond pulse length. Um, and, and sorry, I just realized I was a little bit incorrect. 
it's not 1.5 microseconds, it's 1.5 milliseconds, which is actually 1500 microseconds for like the center pulse position uh, for this. But I kind of like that because, you know, that's usually how you use servos when you're, um, you know, looking at like the signals, you're trying to set that pulse width. So you can use degrees, you can set this degrees value, but um, I don't know, I, I think it makes more sense to use the microsecond pulse length just because I'm more familiar with uh, servos here. And, you know, in order to use this degrees and radians, again, you've got to have the, the uh, arc of rotation for your servo, and you might not know that exactly. So, uh, okay, so enough talk, let's change this. Now, the position function, it again has to take in which channel, so I have channel seven is this servo that it's connected to, so that's the first parameter. And then the next parameters you have to pass in is keyword arguments. So you have to say like US microseconds equals, and then here's the pulse length in microseconds. So let's set 1500, that should be dead center for the servo. And I forget exactly how I've connected this horn, so it might not be exactly dead center, but I set that and okay, yeah, you see it just moved a little bit into kind of the center position. Uh, but let's go to one of the extremes, let's say 1000 microseconds. So this should be like far left, for example. So I'll hold it so it doesn't fall over. And okay, you see it moved like this. And so I guess, you know, left is actually just rotating this way. So it's, it's one of the extremes. And then let's go 2000 microseconds, so two milliseconds. And then uh, we'll let it move. And there you go. So it moves in pretty much the exact opposite. So if I go back to 1000, you know, I go to one extreme, another extreme. Now some servos can go further. Like I think this servo, I can go up to like, you know, maybe 2200 or so. I can go further, you know, I don't know, let's start at 20, 2400 uh, microseconds. So nope, that doesn't work. So that's, you know, a little too far for it. So, you know, maybe I can dial it back to like 2100 microseconds. So just experiment, you know, you can see kind of what the limits are, how far you can go with this. And I can probably go below a thousand, like let's try going you know, 700 microseconds for this. So it sweeps back and yeah, a little bit further back that way. Um, so that's it. That's how you control a servo. It's, it's that simple. You connect it to this driver board uh, and then you just change the pulse width to control the position of your servo. Now, if this was a continuous rotation servo, that pulse width controls the speed and the direction that it's moving. So uh, uh, 1500 kind of millisecond or microsecond uh, pulse width should be stopped, like no movement at all. Uh, and then, you know, 1,000 would be like moving pretty quickly in one direction and 2,000 would be moving pretty quickly in the opposite direction. So again, just experiment with the values and see how it works. Uh, and also just to show you can use that degrees parameter. So I can say, you know, for this channel seven, I can say degrees equals, let's say zero degrees. And so that should move it into one of the extremes. And then I can go to 180 degrees and that's gonna move it into the other extreme uh, for this. So you see, yeah, that just flips all the way around to the other extreme there. So, you know, again, you can experiment with these and see uh, which, which way you kind of prefer here to, uh, to operate with your servos. And again, you can connect, connect up to eight servos and control the, uh, the pulse width of each one individually. So control the position of each one individually uh, and go crazy with it. So, you know, you could build a robot, you could like actuate. I've seen lots of people like build like smart switches. Like uh, I think there's even some 3D printed things where you can put them on a light switch has a little servo that just moves and flips a light switch up and down, for example. That's a really cool, fun project. So, you know, DIY smart uh, home kind of stuff where you don't have to buy all these fancy, you know, switches and things. Build it yourself and do it with MicroPython. That would be a fun long-term project, the MicroPython smart home. So that would be cool to do. Um, okay, so that's all there is to this guide. Uh, it's, you know, it's that simple to set up the uh, PCA9685 PWM and servo driver. So again, if you need to control a lot of servos, if you need to dim a bunch of LEDs or if you're just generating a pulse width modulation signal and you're not happy with uh, what your board can do, then check out one of these little breakout boards. And again, for the feathers, it's super simple. You know, you just plug in the feather wing and you're good to go with this. You've got eight channels, up to eight servos you can control. You know, that's perfect. Get a couple continuous rotation servos. So you've got like the wheels of a robot, maybe a few uh, micro servos for like arms. You know, you can move the arms up and down of your robot. That'd be kind of fun uh, to do for that. And then maybe uh, use the other channels for like LEDs. You know, have a couple big LEDs as like eyes on your robot or something. And you know, you can dim them and brighten them and stuff like that. That. So cool stuff. And if, if you build a fun MicroPython robot project, uh, show it on the show and tell. I would love to see a MicroPython robot. That would be really cool. Uh, you know, tell, I, I want to do one eventually, but hey, beat me to the punch. You know, build a cool one and we'll blog it up for sure and, uh, and show you guys what's, uh, what's cool and out there. Um, okay, so if there are questions, throw them in the chat. And it does look like uh, I think the audio stuff was fixed. So, uh, uh, you know, word the wise, I got this new preamp and uh, 
Uh, I'm not an audio engineer by training. I'm having to learn this stuff as I go. And turns out if you only have your microphone plugged into one channel, uh, your audio is only going to go on one channel, but you can split your microphone and put it into both channels. And that's what I've done here. So hopefully that works. Um, okay, we'll go back to kind of the headshot view here. And I think we'll wrap this up then. So yep, we'll go back to this view. So yep, I don't see any questions. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. This is Tony from Adafruit. This was the PCA9685 PWM and servo driver with MicroPython video. So again, I just showed you how to use a little MicroPython module to control this uh, board from your MicroPython micro code. So you can control servos, you can dim LEDs, do all kinds of fun stuff with that. Uh, check out youtube.com slash Adafruit, and you can see this video and all kinds of other fun project videos there. Check out twitch.tv slash Adafruit. You can watch me stream these things live. I like to do a couple streams a week, and uh, I'm starting to move the streams. I think I'm going to do a stream on Tuesdays, like today, and a stream on Fridays. Um, I used to do a Monday stream, but it's a little bit hard to get things kind of ready after the weekend for that, so I think let's try Tuesdays and Fridays. And again, uh, I'm just getting through a bunch of fun hardware modules. Uh, all kinds of, basically, if you have one of the feather wings, uh, you'll probably see in the near future a video and or guide on it uh, that's MicroPython related. So keep your eyes peeled for that. We'll get through those in the next few weeks. Uh, but otherwise, this is Tony from Adafruit. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys later. Uh, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. You know, let us know that this is interesting stuff and that you like it. And we'll keep doing this kind of stuff. We'll keep making this great content and uh, pushing forward with all kinds of fun MicroPython stuff. So until then, I'll see you guys later. It's Tony from Adafruit. Thanks.